and welcome to the Lockdown Tactics. To kick us off this week, we've got an absolute cracker. The former England and Chelsea captain, John Terry. Snoddy pulled out all the, snop, the stops. You know, for me, I th- mate, I thought you were just his taxi driver to and from uh, London to, to Birmingham when you were at Villa at the time, but no bad for a boy for the, the East End of Glasgow, eh? Yeah, boy, they listen, the big man was outstanding. Um, delighted to have him on board. Um, and, you know, some of the stories he's got for his um, behind-the-scenes access, you know, his playing career, but he tells us a lot about, you know, the coaches about the Jose Mourinho, Carlo Ancelotti, and what life's like as a coach just now. So brilliant. Yeah, I think that one of the main reasons as well um, that we, we spoke to John, and I think it's, it's something that obviously is close to his heart, is, you know, he's trying to raise, or he has now raised £250,000 for the Make-A-Wish campaign, also for the NHS. You know, there's some of the stuff he gets into with that as well. Is, is, you know, it can, it just shows, you know, sometimes, you know, as, as a footballer, the things that goes on behind the scenes and the things that, that um, you know, that goes unnoticed. And, you know, yes, you know, he's obviously linked a lot of it into, his, uh, his Instagram post and everything, but the work that this guy's done over the years when he actually speaks about it with Chelsea and everything is unbelievable. Yeah, listen, he's 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 trying to lose um quarter million quid. Um, you know, he's he's just moved on to now with uh, putting his shirts and stuff um, you know, up for auction. Um I think he he'll probably he'll reach the target. Um, you know, it'll be on sort of social media platforms and it'll be on John Terry dot twenty six through his Instagram page. You can see the jerseys he's got there. The stuff he's got is incredible. The work he's doing is unbelievable. Make a wish. NHS, you know, it's um, it just sums him up as a guy, really, because, you know, as a teammate, he was he was always the same. Sort of help mothers out, help teammates out. And, you know, it's brilliant. Superb. It's pretty emotional stuff, though, when he starts to get into it as well, though. Do you know what I mean? So, everybody, sit back and enjoy John Terry. Yeah, firstly, pleasure to be on. It's um, obviously good time slots at, at Villa and stuff, but... Just um, with all this going on, with lockdown and stuff, we've all had probably a lot of time on our hands as well to kind of think and reflect a little bit. And, you know, you touched on the mental health side that I'm sure we'll come on to later. But, you know, for me, it was about kind of giving back. And I've been an ambassador for Make-A-Wish for 20 years now um, and had the relationships with them. And, and just touching on that as well while we're there, it's they've had to cancel um, over 2,000 wishes for, for sick and terminally ill kids which is, it just absolutely breaks my heart. And then we've got the other side of it, which the fantastic work the NHS is doing um, in, in the UK has been, been incredible. And I think everyone kind of brought in and seen firsthand what they're doing. So it's just an opportunity for me with my social media reach, um, an opportunity to raise some some real funds that make a real impact on families, um, kids individually, that will probably not see the light of day after this. They'll be locked down for, for the rest of their their short lives and it you know I, I, it kind of fills me up it's heartbreaking that they're never going to yes. see the light of day again kind of thing you know and it's can we make a small difference to these kids and you know get videos or give them their final wish by a video call from one of the celebrities i know and that kind of thing so hopefully we can we're on the way to reaching my two hundred fifty thousand pound target that everyone been uh, has been donating to which has been incredible it's fantastic stuff that you're doing, John. But how, see if you go right back to the start. How did you come involved with with uh, Make a Wish, and, and you know what else have you done to it? Because I mean, to, to get to, I mean, you only started last week. To get to two hundred and fifty thousand pounds is unbelievable. And, you know, as you say, you you make such a difference to to a lot of people's not only the, the kids' life, but you know, to their parents and stuff like that as well. But you know, how did you come and um, you know start get involved in all that? Well, obviously, being at Chelsea, we had a lot of, of, of kids wanted wanted to be mascot or for their final wish before they passed away. And we had a boy called Oscar um, come to a Chelsea game. He was he was seven years old at the time when he when he came with his dad at, at Chelsea. He came with his mum and dad at Chelsea at the time. He was mascot for the Man United game. I kind of had to carry him out because he couldn't walk properly. Um, he was told that he was going to have six months to live after that after that night, and. Uh, it honestly is like still now I'm still in touch with his dad. It absolutely broke my heart. And to see what not only him as a boy, but what the family were going through just, just tore me apart, to be honest. And so I spoke to the guys that make a wish and wanted to become part, a, a bigger part in, in, in the foundation really, and uh, make an impact on his lives. But he went on, he was told he had six months to live. And I spoke to Mourinho after that night. And we invited him down to the training ground, said to him he can come whenever he wanted. He didn't go to school. So him and his dad used to come down probably once, twice a week at certain times. 
and um, he ended up living for another two years. Now yeah. I don't know whether that I don't know whether that was the fact that he had Chelsea and his heroes to come and sit with, but he would come and sit there, and Mourinho would sit there. He'd lamps would have a coffee with him and his dad, and we'd have breakfast together. He'd watch train. He'd go home. And it just seemed to pick him up. And his dad was saying, this is having such a, a positive response from him. You know, can we continue doing it? And he he went on to kind of live, like I say, for another kind of 15, 16 months. And then eventually he passed away. But like I said, I'm, I'm still in touch with his dad and still meet his dad for a coffee. And it's just grown from there, really, that that's just one instance. But there's many young kids that they want to come and see their idols and experience a day with, with their idols. And I was very fortunate at Chelsea to be captain and, and be a, be part of that process. And one of the things, John, is um, when uh, you know, when Chris is saying that uh, you know they make a wish, but you've also in, in, involved the NHS uh, in with this. Um, I think that all these were just sitting back in admiration and how what, obviously what a great job they're doing them and the key workers. Um, is 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 that is are you going to mix the sort of charity the the, the target of two hundred fifty thousand when you when you get there? Um, are you going to try and mix that up with, with Make a Wish and the NHS? Yeah, exactly. That's nods. It's going to be split kind of 50 50 down the middle. So 125,000 each, or if we, you know, go beyond that, they'll, they'll obviously get more of that. But I just wanted to do that. I've got friends who are working in the NHS and kind of leaving their kids at home. And I kind of seen firsthand. So a lot of these kind of frontline workers are having to get carers in to look after their children that having to go to work and save lives on the front line for us. And then coming yeah. home, having to cook dinner, go yep. shopping. So this is really gonna, it's not just a case of going, oh, there's the money. It's really going personal with people and, and narrowing it down to individuals of going, what do you need as a family? And there could be a thousand cases like that. We need our shopping taken care of. So I you're doing it baby. more individually to try and, um, what, is there somebody in at the NHS to try and say, I, I, sorry, make a wish to say, we're going to do individual cases to try and say, right, this is what they need, and we're going to try and make that make that happen, basically. Yeah, a make a wish that's pretty straightforward because most wishes cost around between five and seven thousand, um, yeah, depending probably. on the size of the family, kind of thing. But w with regards to the NHS, I really wanted to get personal with with that and kind of. So I've been dealing with Chelsea and Westminster. So being at Chelsea for twenty two years, like I was, I kind of know a lot of the um, the staff down there anyway. So have that relationship. So just being able to kind of touch base with those personally just felt a little bit more personal, really. And, and like yeah, I say, that just touching again back on Make a Wish, the thing that people don't see, there's a lot of these kids that, that are dying in the world and have got months or a week to live and they've got siblings as well. So the siblings have to go through all this kind of care and sometimes they can be forgotten as well. So yes, a lot of it of dealing, course, with, of dealing with Make a Wish is going actually we're not just focusing on the kids that are ill we're focusing on the family so what can we yeah. do as a family and give them their last wish so that might be a trip to euro disney as a family yes. where they get the photos so we send the photographer and they get the photos that they need from that trip that will last forever but you also then include yeah. the, the siblings so brothers and sisters and things like that so it becomes a family a family yeah. holiday. So see all that, John, as well, as you touch on there, like, see even, like, I know it's it's, it's a horrible um, situation, but you, as you say, when the kids pass away, enough, do, do you still keep in contact and try and help the family as much as you possibly can and look after them for a for a number of months or years, or is that just an ongoing thing? Yeah, it's just an ongoing thing. I mean, there's more personal ones and obviously the ones that have, have come to Chelsea over the years I'm still in contact with, but you know, that there's so much great work that goes on at Make-A-Wish that other celebrities do that kind of don't get publicised and they want to keep it kind of behind closed doors, that kind of thing. But again, it could be anything. So in the football world, you know, we get to give them their final wish. That could be a Formula One. We see one on my Instagram with a little boy. His wish was to be a police officer for the day. So he yeah. kind of sat in the back of the car and off he went and was part of that process for the day and just unbelievable. So they dressed him up in, in the uh, police uniform and his little face just... You know, just it, it just breaks your heart. And when you see it, and when you've got kids of your own as well, you come home and it's like, it really hits home.